Recording is on. Good to know. Okay, I'm going to switch over to my slide deck. And. Okay, so I can't see all of your faces, so um, feel free to uh, jump in with audio and not wave your hands if you need my attention. Um, so welcome to the Connectathon 28 kickoff for Smart V2. I'm Carl Anderson. This is my first time hosting this track. Um, I've hosted other tracks in the past, but this is probably the, the largest one I've worked on. So please bear with me. Um, and also, I wasn't involved with the previous Smart V2 Connectathon track in May. So I've done a lot of real quick getting up to speed on um, what's new in the Smart App Launch spec and um, how OAuth works, and a lot of really fun things. So um, also, I might say some things that are wrong or um, not quite there. Please feel free to connect or to correct me. I'm, it's probably my bad. OK, so uh, the major thing that's new in this Connectathon versus um, Connectathon 27 is there's asymmetric client auth. Um, this is um, a feature that was um, deemed important. It's uh, it has advantages over symmetric auth and um, and other forms of authentication. And um, one of them is it's it's easier for the the client app to manage their own secrets. Essentially, the the launching EHR can pull in the, the most recent um, public key dynamically and verify that the signed JOT is signed by who they, they say they are using that public um, dynamic key. Um, asymmetric auth is inherently more secure because if you have a shared secret, if that secret is leaked and that opens up some potential attack vectors and other problematic um, scenarios, so the symmetric auth is um, probably less favorable than the asymmetric. Um, this is not uh, a new technology. This is widely supported. Um, so you should be able to find uh, existing modules and, and libraries to help you implement this. Um, and also, there's, there's parallels to the, the bulk data um, IG. So this is sort of a tested and true and not a new thing to fire. So, and hopefully you all know that already. Um, okay, so some of the work that we've done in anticipation of the Connectathon is uh, we put together a, a demo confidential client. Now, a confidential client is a client that can keep a secret. Essentially, it's a, uh, uh, a server-based um, client that can uh, protect its own uh, private key. Um, and so there's a, an example. It's about 200 lines of code. It's a, a node app. Um, you can find it by clicking into this link. Um, and you can see uh, we're hosting it on a, um, a Jitsi website. So it's a little bit janky. Uh, the first time it runs, um, if it hasn't been running in a while, it sort of takes half a minute to, to spin up. But you can actually connect the, um, the smart app launch uh, fork that we've created in the Microsoft Healthcare Madison organization, you can connect that to this app and you can see that it's, it's going through the whole handshake and authentication process, the whole flow. So um, I should also mention that this slide deck in the upper left corner of every page, there's a short link to this slide deck. So I intend to have the, the slide deck sort of be a um, a good place to start from if you need to find something else. So we've talked about the, the demo confidential client. Here's a, a sneak peek at what the new uh, features in the, the smart app launcher look like. Um, you can see there's this app registration options panel at the top. And you can click on that to toggle hiding and showing some of the new um, configuration options that we've added. Essentially, these options are supposed to be things that you would um, configure when an app is first registered 
with an EHR. And these are like a, a one-time registration process. This is not something that um, would happen every single time an app is launched. So um, in order to avoid cluttering the UI, they're sort of stuffed away into this collapsible panel here. Um, and hopefully none of these things are totally new to you guys. I think everyone's sort of on board with the, the concept of asymmetric auth. Um, but anyways, this is how it works. Um, you expand that panel, you can select client confidential asymmetric, and then you enter your redirect URI list. There can be more than one space separated. Um, if you have a, a JWKS URI, you can enter that. And if you do, then when you tab out of that field, the UI will actually fetch from that and then auto-populate the JWKS inline. Now, you can also provide your own um, key set or key store and just sort of paste the contents in here, and that'll be passed along um, through the context parameter uh, to the, the app when it's launched. But um, so you can sort of do either or both. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you go to smart.algo.run, you'll see this. Um, so some other new things, we've made a lot of changes to the, uh, the IG itself. Uh, the, the IG was validated in May and there were something like 75, 80 uh, ballot issues and a good percentage of those have been resolved. Uh, and there'll be some more resolved in the next couple days. Um, the resolutions are, are all voted on and set. They just have to be applied to the IG. And we'll be walking through some of the new um, changes on Tuesday. I'll probably, I think I've earmarked an hour to go through um, some of the new changes. And you know, it's not too late to, to submit feedback. If, if you see a, a typo or if something is confusing, uh, we're definitely gonna be looking forward to having your feedback and, and making some changes. Um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Um, and you can find a link to the, the draft most recent version of the IG here. Okay, so the previous Connectathon had six, I think, scenarios, and we will be supporting all of those. And as a convenience, um, I've linked to the, the previous Connectathon description of each one here, but here's a summary of what those were. So if you, um, if you, had a, if you participated last time and you wanted to double check that everything still works, um, this is a good place to sort of find a reminder of what that looks like and um, yeah, go ahead and check that out. Uh, I think something new this time, if you've done Connectathons in the past, um, I, I thought it'd be a good idea for me to sit down uh, with one-on-one -on -one participants and sort of um, like mid Connectathon, just have you show me what you're working on. Um, I, I was thinking of, you know, when we used to do these in person and there'd be a big table and I'd just sort of walk around and, you know, drop myself next to people and say, hey, I missed that. So I'm gonna schedule some one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions with you at some point. Um, if you have a particular time that works best for you, then feel free to uh, ping me in advance. But otherwise, I'm just gonna send some calendar invites um, to anyone who's on the, uh, the registration list. And um, I'll be looking for what your goals are. And a lot of you I've already met with in advance to sort of get an idea of what you're interested in and what your goals are for the Connectathon. So this shouldn't be new. And I think we've gone over this, but for those watching the recording who I haven't met yet, um, don't be surprised if you get uh, an invitation out of the blue. Um, part of what the organizers of the Connectathon would like to get out of this event is a report out. So they would like to see for the participants of this track, what their goals were, what they accomplished, and so during these one-on-one -on -one sessions, I'll be talking about that and also um, sort of asking you, what can you show me? What do you think you're gonna get done that you can you know, grab a screenshot of and, and pass along to me so I can pass it along to them? Um, we'll be looking for bugs. Um, I expect we'll find quite a few. Um, like I mentioned earlier, before we were all on the call, we've got the happy path 
um, working for the, the demo app and the launcher, but I expect there'll be some um, edge cases that we haven't quite covered yet. Um, and I think there's some room for improvement with exposing the internal error state of the server side to the client. So um, I expect there'll be some changes in the next couple of days um, to make this easier for testers and developers. Uh, and if you have any, any ideas, um, I'm looking for that. OK. So I've been sort of racing through this. Um, I think the next slide is actually questions. But I'll just say briefly here, um, there's the smart channel in Zulip. And I have a, a link to the actual topic for the dedicated for ConnectLand 28. Um, feel free to use these links to get to those places. I think most of you know where to find that anyway. Um, and then this one is always hard for me to remember the, the most recent Whova link. So I've put it in here. Um, this will take you to the, the agenda search screen. And the way that I find the smart V2 messages is I, I search for smart space app space. If you search for smart V2, it doesn't give you any results. I don't know what their deal is, but um, OK. I'll probably put a, a note there. We've talked about the track report out. OK. Are there questions or are there comments? So um, the question I had earlier, um, you, you answered it. Um, however, okay. I was a little curious. Um, maybe it's more of a confirmation than anything else. For the asymmetric authentication, we're still just do, we're doing auth code flow with that. We're not doing like client credential flow or anything. Is that is that correct? This is a, a still like an auth code flow uh, use case. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's right. I think we intend to do both. Oh, both. Okay. So, so there is a, there's a bulk data track, which is the best place if you want to focus on backend services workflows um, next week. Sure, sure. Uh, yeah, but those specifications will be unified in the next publication of the Smart App Launch Spec. It'll include two different flows, client credentials and auth code. Cool. And it'll include different authentication mecha mechanisms for clients that need to authenticate. And those will apply. Um, those will apply so, in those two areas. Yeah. Cool, thanks. Yeah, I'll make sure I'll make sure I'm ready for both then. Yep. Sounds good. Um, I guess the only other thing is, uh, and we can cover this next week, but um, as I was looking through the introspection use cases, did have some kind of questions and comments about that. Um, you know, would the, what would be a good time to, to chat about that next week? Okay. Is this something that you think the whole group would be interested in um, participating in a discussion around? I mean, I can schedule a breakout for that topic. Maybe, and maybe it was discussed earlier. Um, it's more, it's mainly around the client authentication for the introspection. Um, sort of, you know, uh, you know, the the in my experience, you need some sort of client authentication for that introspection endpoint, or it's best practice anyway, and so. What you'll be, be recommending for that, it looked to me like the, the, the existing uh, launcher um, just gives, I think it just gives the, I think it just replays the access token, I believe. Um, so and maybe I misinterpreted that, but I, that was, I felt like that was the only thing that was maybe not what I was expecting uh, when I first ran through that use case. So. Yeah, I think this would be good to talk through, and, and I think, you know, right now the spec sort of leaves open the possibility that servers can impose authentication requirements uh, on the introspection call, but we don't get into the details about um, sure. whether, whether or in what situations that's the, the right idea or what clients should be allowed to make that call, those, those kinds of things. Uh, but yeah, let's, I'd, I'd say let's do a breakout on that. Okay. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be great. Because I, I, I think at least what, what I've seen a lot of is the, the introspection, what's maybe a little bit different from maybe what I'm seeing here is that usually what I'm seeing introspection out in the field, it's it's actually the resource server doing it and not actually the client, not actually the client yeah. doing it, right? All, yeah. all of our strong use cases yeah. for token introspection are about standing up additional resource servers under the same protection as, you know, the main fire server. So 100% on, on that use case. A client, you know, you're just telling it information that it already should have uh, you yeah. know, a, a smart app is not going to learn anything new from calling an introspection endpoint. 
Yeah, yeah, certainly. So, okay. We didn't, we didn't want to rule it out, but agreed on, on the actual use cases. Cool. Well, I don't think we have any breakout sessions scheduled officially. Um, this will be the first. Are there any other that make sense? I mean, I guess the walk through the, the new changes to the IG will be one. Um, if you have any ideas for um, potential topics for breakouts, please just ping me on Zulip or send me an email. Uh, I think I'm going to cut the recording unless there's anything else that anyone wants to get in. And I'll post a link to this in Zula for the, the folks who didn't, didn't know about it. Did you get any uh, responses from any of the other server vendors to participate in the track? Like Cerner and Epic or? What I heard from uh, Epic, I, I got a, a link from Isaac. He said that um, he wasn't sure if a person was actually going to be here for the track, but it, his stance is that the asymmetric auth is um, a must have for them. And they, I think their um, test servers already support it. So he gave me some links to um, some endpoints. I can share that with the group too. Okay, great. And I think the the guy from Cerner uh, was working on getting um, approval to come. So I'm not sure what that's about, but he was at the previous one and I think they're definitely um, interested in this feature as well. I'm not sure if uh, next week he'll be there or not. Okay, great, thanks. Yep. Cool. Well, I will um, give us all some time back and it was good to see everyone and looking forward to next week. Great, sounds good. All right. Thank you, see you later. Have a good, good weekend. Good. Thanks. Yep. Take care.